Good morning, my creative friends, and welcome to Painting in Your PJs with Manette. I'm Dr. Manette Riordan, and this is the place to gather in the mornings or at your leisure to really connect with yourself through art and visual journaling practices. I love working with midlife professionals who are struggling to find their purpose and to reconnect to that authentic creative self-expression that provides meaning to our lives. And today we're diving into prompt eight of our 22 end of year prompts. I have been for the last few weeks working in an end of year reflection journal. If you're just joining me for the first time, I'll do just a quick flip through. And you can find a link to the complete list of reflection questions in the description of these videos. And I need to do a little work to stop my pages from sticking together. All right, so get some wax paper or some Dorland's wax and wax the pages. So far, I think this was my favorite spread. This one was apparently still wet when I put the paper in there. Oh, you're seeing all the mess this morning. This is hilarious. So what happens when I'm painting is that on this particular paper, I've noticed the paint tends to go over the edges quite a bit. And so I need to make sure I take these protection papers out a little quicker. But you can't even see any of the places that it's stuck because of these messy pages. This was yesterday's super fun and just playful abstract play all about beginnings and endings. Beginnings and endings. And I loved how this little, it looks like a sloth to me, just kind of showed up unexpectedly. So today our question is one of my favorite questions from the entire list. And the question this morning is, what would you name the season of your life that you're in? What would you name the season of your life that you're in? This is such a great question and this is one question that I ask most people even before I have a first conversation with them and it's one that I definitely dive into deeply with my one-on-one -on -one clients what would you name the season of your life you currently find yourself in and I've seen all kinds of creative answers I've seen Things like, I'm in a season of joy, I'm in a season of despair. And then I've seen people use the actual seasons, and that was how I was feeling as I responded to this question. So if I ask the question, what is the season of my life? I definitely feel like I'm in winter. And if you followed along with any of my processes so far, you know I love to journal right on the page and then to paint over the top of that and really plant the seeds. And I thought about winter, which made me think about snowflakes, which made me think about zen tangles. So just following the threads of my own creative thought. And if you're joining me live, please pop in and say hello this morning. And let me know what is the season of your own life? What is the season of your own life that you currently find yourself in? And why am I in winter? Because I'm feeling the need for deep rest. A couple of days ago, I shared with you the six aspects of a radiant life. And one of those is deep rest. I'm finding myself want to hibernate and cocoon a little bit. Go into some deep planning for my business next year. My life is pretty set in terms of routine. I'm not looking to make any big dramatic changes or set any dramatic health and wellness goals. I need to stay on the path that I'm in. And when I think about the, the bear hibernating, 
you know, they are on a path all year long and then they rest, right? And then they come out and they go into forage and gather and feed and birth babies and all the things, right? But this is a time for deep rest. I'm looking forward to family time and solitude. I'm one of those ambiverts that definitely needs a variety, <coughs> excuse me, that needs a variety of together time and alone time, together time and alone time. And I have been playing with, this is just a plain old Crayola, Crayola marker that you see me writing with. And what I'm loving about this Crayola marker is that it will bleed through my paint on the page and I will still be able to see some of the bits of handwriting and some of my own marks. It's also a time as we come into solstice of spiritual connection, depending on your faith and religious practices, this may be a really meaningful and important time for you as well. So there's the spiritual connection, always feels deeper this time of year. And what I'm really longing for is just to go curl up with a book in front of the fireplace and a nice hot cup of tea or coffee and simply read. So this is definitely a season of wanting to slow down rather than speed up. Slow down rather than speed up. Are you coming to say good morning? Come on. Yeah. This is Diego. He likes to sit in my lap while I'm playing in the mornings. It's a little hard to paint with him in my lap, but um, we'll sit here for a minute. Hmm. You know, it feels like there's a lot of S words. There's solitude and solstice and spiritual connection. And there's a lot of solace to be found going within as well as spending time with family. My daughter comes home in a couple of days. My brother and his family are coming tomorrow. So winter is all of this, but it's also a season of celebration. And for me, I'm also in a season of winter because I just moved someplace where I'm living in winter for the very first time ever. We had winter in Texas, but it was very brief. We'd have an ice storm pass through, you know, growing up in Texas most of my life living there, the, you know, the winter was fleeting. But he, and then we lived in California a lot as well, and there was no winter. To speak of and so living in Colorado I'm getting to experience what is it like to live in winter with the darker days and where are those outer darker days a metaphor for any darker days I might be feeling inside around my need for solitude and deep rest and this is also a time of year for me for deep reflection which is another one of the six pillars of a radiant life. So these are all the things I'm thinking about when I think about winter as the season that I'm currently in. And if you're here with me live, please say hello. It's always nice to know that people are watching. And if you're watching the replay, drop me an emoji or a smiley face or a comment in the comment section so that I can say hello and thank you for watching. I'm super appreciative and grateful of people taking their time to watch. So now I'm going to come in. I love that there's some of that acrylic ink bleeding through. So we've got some yummy colors already on the page, but I am going to come in with a coat of gesso right over the top of these words. And you're going to see what I mean about that plain old Crayola marker just bleeding right through. So I'll still be able to see some of those lines and marks. And this page doesn't have any collage on it yet, so it want, it's wanting to roll up. So I'm working in a handmade journal on just some heavyweight printer paper that I wanted to test out to see it, what it would do. It was not 
very expensive paper. I just picked it up at Office Depot, uh, and but I loved the, the texture of it. It's a little bit matte on here, right? So I really liked the feel of it, but I'm finding that it doesn't love wet media. I'm having to do some work to increase the integrity and density of my pages, which is fine, right? It's all just learning and experimenting. This journal is just for me. It's not for anyone else. I am not a perfectionist. So I'm happy that I can see all of my words underneath here. And when I was thinking about winter and snowflakes, my son Connor, this was one of the designs he created for our Mindful Patterns membership, and it is the Flower of Life. It is a design from Sacred Geometry, and it seemed appropriate for me this morning to think about where I'm at with deep rest, wanting to go deep within to prepare for the blooming and flowering of what's to come. So I am going to put some color on the background, collage this down, and then spend a little time with some Zentangle patterns over the top of this gorgeous flower of life design. And I'm gonna add some more color to my page here. So if you've been watching me for a few days, you know I've been saying I've been really drawn mostly to primary primary colors while working in this journal. Going through a lot of blues in particular. Also noticing that my a lot of my paints are getting low and it's about time for a nice fun restock. And this is mostly going to get covered up by my design here. So I'm just creating that background. Mostly what I'm going to see are the edges. This is also just printed on plain printer paper. And the winter skies in Colorado are mostly blue and beautiful. Colorado, apparently, I didn't know this until I moved here, but has more sunny days per capita than any other state, including Hawaii. 300 days of sunshine on average every single day. And I'm using this newsprint as my under paper to clean off my brushes and my tools. Love it. Good morning, Kay. We're going to be working with this uh, design, but you could use one of your Sacred Circle designs from the Mindful Patterns membership too. And this is from a project I was doing yesterday, so I'm getting all these yummy colors on my under paper and thinking about some collage. Primary colors are so lovely to play with. And I'm curious, Kay, if you were to name the season of your life you currently find yourself in, what would you call this season? What would you call this season? It's such an interesting question, if you feel inspired to share. All right, so trying to look and see, do I, kind of wanting that to be a little bit darker blue. So let's come back with some more, maybe some of this indigo. And I have a little bit of these old, I don't use them very often, high flow golden acrylics. They do fun things on canvas, but I find I don't use them that much in my art journal. So I have some paints like this that I've had for years that I'm trying to use up. This one doesn't want to open. So we'll just take a brush and put a brush in there. And I've been talking with people about just when it comes to supplies, saying yes to the things that you really love and letting go of other things, right? Saying yes to the things you love and letting go of other things. So in a class I was teaching yesterday, someone was talking about, you know, watercolor. Somehow this got a piece of paper stuck in it. Um, oh, I see what I did. Uh, watercolor versus 
acrylic and how messy acrylic are acrylics are and that cleanup is so much harder and my advice was to just let go of the acrylic nobody said you had to use acrylic mm, and I do love the way these bloom yes I love that thank you Kay winter because you're doing a lot of waiting to see what unfolds that's part of the magic of these and that definitely gives me that sort of snowflakey feel of just letting it bloom on the page seeing what's happening letting it mix in the background and sometimes waiting can be really frustrating but if we can really sit with the waiting i'm making a big old mess on this page it's such a beautiful time and i forgot to grab some water so I'm going to need to go grab some water. I am not a particularly patient person so bleeding is something that I find really challenging. So I have a lot of paint on here so I'm just going to take a sheet of paper, press that down on there to pull up some of that wetness. Just creating a big old mess, but again, this will be fun collage fodder for another page. And it's starting to look like a starry sky, which is kind of maybe where I was going without even knowing it. Still not happy with that color of blue though. Kind of happy with how some of my words are starting to come back through a little bit actually that's looking it's looking pretty good on there not too bad but i still maybe want a little bit of this beautiful indigo around the outside edges because this is what's going to show around the outside of my circle here And it's, I want it to feel sort of night sky-like. When I think of, of winter, I think of dark. And so I was thinking of night sky. Hmm. It's almost like there's a, a face starting to appear in here I can start to sort of see the shapes and it's a really fun way to play with your art just like I did yesterday when you play in this kind of abstract way to just notice what arises like you don't always have to be so intentional with what it is that you're creating but to really let the paint and the marks speak to you and see what happens and it's amazing the stories that it tells. In fact, in my visual journaling club last night, someone was asking me about meaning in art. And we were creating a, a beautiful little painting of a kingfisher and talking about new beginnings. And she said, there was so much meaning for me in what I created today. And I said, that's why I make art is because I love that sort of unconscious unfolding of meaning in ways that tend to always surprise me. So I'm gonna take a water bottle and I am gonna spray this with a little bit of water, let it dry for a minute. And then I'm going to wipe up the water droplets as the paint around it dries and it's going to create a really fun sort of starry sky effect and while that's drying i'm going to walk to the other side of my studio and grab my water that i forgot Righty. 
don't want that acrylic paint to be sitting on my brushes for very long because it's very hard to get it back out again. So now I'm going to take a paper towel and see if my paint underneath was wet enough for this process. It was, and then I start to push the paint back all the way to the white underneath. And you get this really fun dotted star effect. So it's starting to look even more like a starry sky. Very fun. And that page is very wet, so I'm going to take some time to hit it with my little crack dryer here and get it super, super dry. So if you're watching live, please say hi. I'm going to mute myself for just a minute so you guys don't have to listen to the dryer, and I'll be right back. Okay, it is mostly dry. I didn't want to put my Flower of Life on there when my paint was wet because I want to keep that image more white and not terribly blue, and we'll see if I succeed. Sometimes that matte medium, oh, that was gesso, dang it. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, that's what I get for talking and not paying attention. Let me find a palette. And I am just going to scoop that off of there and onto a palette to use for, actually, I can just put it on this page over here. Let's do that. Things definitely don't always work out perfectly. That's why this is a live video. You get to see me in the mess, in the joy, in the play. going to take that gesso and put it on this page because I like to gesso these pages before I start anyway. Then it'll be all dried and ready for next week. So starting next week, so this is my last live for this week, so starting on Monday the 19th, I'm going to move my start time <laughs> I say whoops a lot, Kay. I am going to move my start time to 7 a.m. Mountain Time instead of 6.30. I'm noticing I need just a little more time in the mornings to, in winter, I'm wanting to sleep in a little bit longer as well. And um, I like a little bit more setup and prep time in the, in the morning. So I'm thinking I'm going to start at 7.00 starting next week. So this is my month of trial and error with this program to see what's really going to work. I already have all my themes planned out for the first few months of next year as well. So I'm not going anywhere, but you know, I'm going to maybe switch up times a little bit and, and see what works. And I realized that the, the thing that was changing was I was spending my personal time in the mornings focused on planning for this at least a little bit and not doing my own writing and spiritual practice in the morning. So I'm going to take back a little bit of that time. Still important to me to be down here early because it's my happy time. Not sure I got quite enough matte medium under there. And I'm getting a little bit of paint on the top. It's all good. I'm just going to draw over the top of the whole thing. 
You probably noticed that I use a lot of matte medium. It really helps to get that surface nice and flat, especially if I know that I'm going to be drawing on the top of that surface. Makes a really nice surface to be able to draw right over the top of. All right, now we have it in there. So again, this has to, thank you, Kay, me too. And I, you know, it's, I have plenty of time in the mornings for all the things I want to do, but there definitely seems to be a natural order to them. That my day goes best when I do things in a certain order. All right, so we're gonna let that get nice and dry. We've already got some nice stuff going on on this page over here as well, which feels really good. And someone looking at my pages doesn't necessarily see the meaning, right? They're seeing the finished product and, you know, is it pretty, right? Or would I want to create something like that? And for me, this is really about the, the process of creation and not at all about the end product and focusing just on what's coming next and are people going to like it? I'm not thinking about any of that. I'm thinking about the season of my life. I'm thinking about winter. I'm thinking about being in this inner space. Seeds have already been planted and they need time to root and to germinate. Like Kay said, it's definitely this waiting stage that we're in. So I'm going to hit this with the dryer again. Put myself on mute because it's kind of an annoying noise. I personally don't like to listen to it. Getting that really nice and dry because if I don't, it will ruin the tips of any pen that I choose to write on here with. And I'm trying to decide if I want to go to classic black or if I want to maybe put some color in here. But when it comes to Zentangle, I'm such a classics girl i really do love the traditional just black and white although i do love white on black as well i think the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure this pen works so this is a, a micron pn which has a rubber nib it's kind of nice and sturdy not as delicate as the micron 01 and I'm using the Flower of Life as my Zentangle string. If you're not familiar with Zentangle, it is a meditative form of drawing simple, repetitive patterns while being mindful of our breath and our intention. The space that we're in. So I'm just coming back and darkening up these lines a little bit where I got some of that white gesso over the top. I love even here where it was wet that some of my words from all the way underneath with that Crayola marker are peeking through. So I've got my words, some of the color and marks. Be interesting to see what it looks like by the time we get to the end. 
And I don't know that I will finish this today. So this is a, a big piece to add patterns to. But we'll see. And I love combining fun doodle patterns with Zentangle patterns to really sort of make these my own. And again, just like when I'm painting, I'm working very intuitively. You'll notice as I go that I'm turning my page. I think one of the many, many things I've learned from my Zentangle practice over the years, this practical tip of turning the page to make it easier for your hand to repeat those lines in the same way in which you started, whether I'm drawing or painting, has been an invaluable tool. And these feel like seed pods to me. Again, we're talking about those seeds have been planted and it's, we're in that waiting stage. What I love about Zentangle is that I can't go fast. It's messy if I go fast, but I have to slow down. And I discovered Zentangle on someone's blog, probably in 2010. And started playing with it and found a local teacher to take an intro class when I was living in Texas she actually was a nurse she was lovely and she came to my office and did a private class for a friend and I and I was hooked I became a certified Zentangle teacher in 2014 and it's really been something that I've incorporated into all of my art. It wasn't something that I pursued specifically as teaching, but I find it's something that I often share with my clients. For stress management or to just help them reconnect to their creativity. It's such a beautiful way to remind us that yes we can draw yes we can draw yes we are creative i feel a little pause what are you doing buddy what yes you're very needy this morning so i normally give them a little bit of wet cat food in the morning and i didn't do that this morning because i had some things to do down here he did get fed but he's down here trying to tell me that he wants more he also just likes his morning snuggles so creating those seed pods in the center of this flower of life and it's easy to find this image for free online. You can just Google flower of life design. And you can find lots of copies of it if you're interested in playing with this design. This would also be just a fun one to color or to paint. It also reminds me a little bit of Venn diagrams with the interconnectedness. So there's definitely a center point, but all of these circles are overlapping and it's the like the overlapping of our life, right? And that how they all come together to create beauty. And it's what I love about working with sacred circles and mandala designs is this idea that the circle is both the contain container as well as each of the individual parts, just like our life. It's such a beautiful metaphor for life where our life is made up of so many different aspects of self. 
as well as the wholeness of who we are. And I'm happiest when I'm in the center, living in that space of wholeness, feeling centered and grounded and present to all the parts. It's easy to get caught up in one part or another. And it's interesting always drawing with the PN instead of the O1, and this is kind of a soft surface as well. Just noticing these lines are thicker. You don't get as delicate a look as you do with an O1. But I also don't like ruining my O1s using them over the top of the matte medium or acrylic paints. They really do not like that surface. So this is a really fun pattern called Paradox. I love the look of Paradox, like these gorgeous little spirals. This is a classic Zentangle pattern from the creators of Zentangle. And I love the, the concept of a paradox because life so often is a paradox. It's where we're holding on to the truth of opposites, right? Where things maybe that don't seem possible or true are. So I love that there's a pattern called paradox and that it's sort of this spiraling in and out, spiraling in and out. Again, you notice I'm turning my page. If anyone else is joining us live, pop in and say hi. Good morning, it's always nice to know that you're here. And you're supposed to turn your page as you're drawing Paradox, but I'm being a little bit lazy and just spiraling those around. And for me, this mindful meditative drawing, when my hands are busy, my mind is free to relax, to focus in. <coughs> Excuse me to wander when I'm working on Zentangle or Sacred Circle designs from our Mindful Patterns membership. I always keep a journal nearby or I will write around the edges of whatever I'm creating because I find that often new inspiration creative ideas, random thoughts and to-dos appear as I'm coloring or drawing, and I want to be able to capture them, not forget them. And this PN is just kind of sliding very nicely across the surface of this page. It's so creamy. Across the top of that matte medium. So here we are, already creating both wholeness and symmetry and diversity of pattern and illustration. I'm gonna think next about a pattern to put in here. Kind of feeling I'm going to come in and add some flower designs in these outer edges. I think I'm going to go with, I have a few that are called in Zentangle vernacular mac and cheese tangles that are favorite, favorite tangles. And this is another very simple classic pattern that I love called bales. It's a grid pattern, but it ends up looking more floral and organic. I'm 
I'm just drawing some grids, trying not to draw those grids too small. It's easy to find step outs for all of these patterns on the internet. Great resources, tanglepatterns.com, tanglepatterns.com. Great resource for patterns. Pinterest is another great resource for getting detailed instructions on drawing these patterns. And one of the tips for drawing veils is not to make those grids too small, not to make them too small. I love the sort of open lattice work that we'll get when we're complete with this. So I'm just coming around, around the edges of that grid, making almost like little puffy rice, shape, rice shapes. And if I go too fast, they don't look symmetrical, but if I slow down, I get some more of that symmetry that I love. And that makes Zentangle truly magical. And I'm not intentionally choosing these patterns, but each of these patterns tell a story as well. Each of these patterns tell a story as well. Let's see if I can just move my camera down just a little bit. Get a little bit closer here. But I've got my seeds in the center. This paradox, like there's a lot going on in there, a lot of movement. And then there's a little more spaciousness in this pattern that almost looks like a net. And nets always make me think about the interconnectedness of all things. The flower of life is also about the interconnectedness of all things and that we can't survive alone, that we really, as much as I love my solitude, I also need that supportive net of caring people around me as well. Silly cat, Diego, is just sort of running around the room talking to himself, trying to get my attention. Again, if you're here popping in live, even for just a minute, say good morning. I love hearing from you. Or if you're watching the replay, Drop me an emoji or a quick comment and let me know you stopped by to watch the replay. I know personally when it comes to watching replays, I tend to often watch them on fast forward to see what the, the project is going to look like. So really enjoying just sitting here with some quiet tangling time this morning. I have a full, busy, wonderfully busy client day ahead of me. And so I relish this early morning creative time
and just being here in that quiet, in that magic. I've always been an early riser as I've gotten older. The early has shifted and changed, but even as a college kid, I wasn't one to really sleep in. I've never been a night owl. And then when my kids were little, I would always make an effort to get up before they did to enjoy that quiet time for writing, reflection, before the busyness of getting everyone ready for school, breakfast made, lunch made, getting them to school, getting myself ready for work. So it's always been an important time of day for me. And my kids are grown and figuring out their lives as young adults. I have one still in university and one out of university for about a year. Making their way in the world. All right, this is coming together. This beautiful flower of life. And I'm just thinking about where I want to go next. I think I'm going to do... Hmm, I'm torn. Do I want another grid pattern? Do I want something more organic? But I'm feeling like I'm wanting to create this container within and that it's not actually flowing over the edges. I love creating zendalas that start in the center and grow out without a necessarily a circle on the outside that are a little more flowy and organic. But this one is feeling that I'm really wanting that wholeness and integrity this morning, that wholeness and integrity this morning. And if I start to think about being in winter and hibernating, I'm wanting to go within. So I'm not wanting things to spill out, but to stay within. And it's interesting because the, the black and white contrast against the blue, I'm not sure I'm loving it. So we'll see where I go. Sometimes I might zentangle this whole design and then paint over all of it. So what might happen if I put a layer of white over the top of it, or a layer of our blues? I don't know. I always believe that everything is paint overable. Everything is paint overable. And I also believe that we always have the power and the choice to rewrite our story. And the story that I'm wanting to tell this morning is a story of wholeness, a story of integrity, which also means wholeness. Hmm. There's a sense of completeness to the circle, a sense of all the things inside a sense of just bringing the end of the year to completion as we're on this journey together through our end of the year reflection All right, so this pattern is called Zeppel. It's a really fun pattern. So the patterns that I've used have been Zeppel, Flux, Bales, kind of a version of Onomato in the center there. So those are the Zentangle patterns that I've used so far. 
And again, you can find instructions for drawing these in a few different places around the internet. And this one also always feels just a little bit tricky to get the grid going, but it ends up being really beautiful. I think I put that first line in the wrong place. And there's no mistakes in Zentangle, so it's all gonna work out just fine. This is another one that even though it starts as a grid, it ends up being sort of more floral and organic. I never quite get the grid right. I should go back and look at the instructions sometimes, but what I've noticed is that uh, it always ends up being beautiful no matter what. So if you're joining live, pop in and say good morning, hello. Great to see you here. Okay, if you're still here, do you have some favorite Zentangle patterns that you've been exploring as you're exploring Zentangle? All right, so I have this very funky grid happening here. And now that I'm getting all the black filled in, I'm really loving the black on the blue. It just took completing the circle. And Kay, even though I've been doing this for over a decade, I feel like there's always more to learn. I still love learning new patterns. I love taking classes from others. I'm super excited to be on the faculty next year for Tangle U, which is a, definitely got that a little wonky in there, which is a continuing education conference and creative retreat for certified Zen Tangle teachers. So next April, I will be in Asheville, North Carolina, which I love Asheville. with a bunch of other certified Zentangle teachers teaching a class and then getting to receive the benefit of upgrading and my own education, learning some new things, getting new ideas for classes and how to use Zentangle in my work. And Tangle U is a great resource for all kinds of classes. TangleU.com. It is going to be exciting. I've taught three times before, I think. And then, of course, the pandemic changed everything. And so I've missed a couple of years. And then she's doing one online and one in person. So I'm also going to the online one as my birthday present to myself. So lots of Zentangle learning coming for me next year, which feels fun to reconnect to. And as I'm thinking about the next couple of weeks of just slowing down myself and my work, there's work that needs to get done over the holidays, but it's also a fun time to kind of learn and explore. So I'll do some 
online classes with other mixed media artists. I love learning new techniques, so I'm constantly growing my own skill set. And then I go take these classes and end up sort of bouncing back to the things that I most love to do. But I find that taking classes with others often helps me show that I know my own creative voice better than I think I do. So this is a little bit messy example of Mzeppel, but I always really love the effect of it. It's a really fun one to shade or to color. And as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking I'm going to come in with some blue colored pencils to have it more just sort of fit into my background here. But I'm not going to finish that in this session. I am still in my PJs because this is painting in my PJs and I have an early client this morning at 8 so definitely need to get out of my pajamas. Well actually she probably wouldn't care if I showed up in my pajamas but I think I would care. I love the private work that I get to do with people around really helping them find their purpose, their focus, make decisions about the authentic creative expression. I had a, a wonderful client here in the studio for a lovely long afternoon on Tuesday looking at what I call reconnecting to our own brilliance and sometimes I think part of our challenge is, you know, we're taught not to brag or that we should be humble, all kinds of crazy stories. And we fail to see the things that we're already best at and the things that are the most meaningful and that we really want to make a stand for in our lives. So I think it's really important as part of the process that I teach that we really own our own genius, our own brilliance, that thing that makes each of us a, a shining light in the world. It's not about being smart or having a lot of skills and know-how. It's usually what are those essential qualities that make us unique. And it's often the things that come so easy and natural to us that we discount them, that we don't even credit them because they come so easy. And we've been taught to think that we have to work hard for things, that things can't come easy. But when you watch some of the best ballerinas or listen to people sing or watch professional athletes. Some of them are so effortless in their art and some you can tell have to work a lot harder at it. And so the place that I want to inspire people to spend time is in their brilliance spending more time in their own effortless creative flow. All right, I'm going pretty fast here. I'm, it's coming together a little bit faster. Thank you, Kay, you as well. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. just finish this off. It 
a little floral pattern in here. And I'm noticing the time, so this one will probably get finished a little bit later this evening. Add a little bit more color, finish up these patterns, and now I'm off to get dressed and ready for my client. The journal goes this way. So I'm sitting here again with the energy of winter, of hibernation, of solitude and solace, as well as the interconnectedness of life and wanting to live a life of wholeness. So that's my answer to the prompt today for what season, what season do I find myself in? Have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs.